Henry Oddsbreaker, get over it. Kruk Chang and I are about to talk Suzuki Samurais. What the hell are you doing with Suzuki Samurai? Uh, I, I got into off-roading this summer, uh, beginning of the summer, and uh, I just spilled Kruk. coffee off myself. Kruk. Um, you have no time. Like you literally, every time I look at anything that you're doing, you're shooting, you're you're packing your own bullets, you're building your own weapon, you're buying another weapon, you're out hanging out with someone else, you're doing appearances. When do you have time to get into off roading? Or are you shooting from a gun rack on top of the roof of your Suzuki Sam uh, SML's drive? Right. No, I uh, I don't. Know. I just on the weekends, I guess. Train hard all week and then uh, have fun during the weekend. Jeez, man, I can't believe that Suzuki Samurais. Like I used to. I used to want one of those when I was, you know, when I was <clears throat> in, <clears throat> in college, which you were probably like in junior high school, not even. You're probably still in <laughs> elementary school at that point. Maybe. But so what happened to you? You said you beat it up pretty bad last time. What happened? Did you roll it? Did you just or just bang it? Uh, oh, no, well, I smacked a tree. Actually, the funny story is I bought uh, like a crappy one during the in the beginning of the summer. And then uh, after two fights ago, as soon as I got home, I found this one. And it's got... You know, it's way upgraded and stuff like that. It's like a rock crawler. So Explain a uh, rock crawler. Because you said that before we started taping. I don't know what that means. Okay, so, so the first one I bought is more for trail. and It, it has a 1.3 liter four-cylinder. It's lifted, but it just doesn't have the power to get to where you know wherever I want to go. The rock crawler is designed for, like, crawling over, like, big giant boulders and rocks. And oh. it's got a six-cylinder in it. It's geared really low. So, like... The thing is, is, when I went out and test drove it, I was going to buy it from this guy. And he's like, hey, do you want to climb up this tree? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Who doesn't? So he took me to his backyard, and I'm driving the Samurai. And I put the tire, the front tire on top on the, of the tree, and I just idle right up this, like, I went like this. Right? And I stopped because I felt it, like, starting to teeter. And the guy was like, yeah, you could probably go a little a little more. So I went a little more and then put it right up, right on its side. So nice. I rolled. I rolled it before I even bought it, and then flipped back over. It started, bought it, drove it home. Hold, hold up, up! Hold up! Hold up! You rolled this thing on the test drive, and yeah. you still bought it. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll text you some pictures. Yeah, you gotta text you some pictures of this thing because this now you've got my interest again. Every time I talk to you, I get interested in something new. I'm not a big. Uh, uh, my girl likes to go hike. You know, she's go hiking and trailing. I have some buddies that are that, are, especially here in Vegas. A couple of girls that work for the UFC are in the trail jeeps. Like they all do this trail ride. And we go up to Moab, you know, which is up towards Utah from here. It's like you know, an hour and a half away. Or they go up to Zion, which is about two and a half hours away. And they go out there and they ride these trails and all these big lift kit jeeps and all this stuff. And somebody else has said something about a rock crawler. And I just, in one ear, out the other, I had no idea what they meant. I didn't realize that you were literally calling up rocks. I just thought it was like, you know, like a Ducati has a monster bike right. motorcycle. I thought it was right. like a name of one of the Jeeps. It was like, you know, a rock crawler. I, no, I mean, they make, uh, I mean, they make Jeep rock crawlers. It all depends on the gears. And, and uh, normally rock crawlers have a, a way better suspension as far as like flexing. You'll see the whole car flex. It's my dog. Yeah. The whole car flex. And, uh, uh, you know, because your tires are going to be like warping, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's a blast. You'll have to look it up. Uh, Couture has a has a pretty 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 good Jeep that he takes off road trail and and I saw him one day. This is you know beginning of the summer. I'm like, whatever your back window. Like, what the hell he goes? Oh, we're off road and, and the top flex and the window just popped. You know, it blew up. I'm like, right. What right. was? Yeah, you know. So the, you understand like the whole body then had a twist. Right. Right. Yeah. Top to pop Two out. tires are gonna be like this, and then the front is gonna be like you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I, I mean, I put some Instagram photos up. Uh, there's a video of me jumping. My one blue one, that I, the first one I bought. Um, the funny thing, the first one I bought, I can get through a lot of stuff, but I have to do it reckless. Like, I have to get some speed going and just, like, hit it hard. Yeah. And uh, and then the, the second one I bought, the Rock Crawler, I, you know, I can do all the trails and stuff, but with finesse because it has the gearing. And, uh, Is it special tires, too, that go with it? Uh, I – well – I'm, I can probably fit bigger tires, but I haven't invested in them yet. So I have uh, like just 33 inch tires on them, like mud crawler or whatever. Oh, well, this this actually brings in a good segue to talk about your fight with uh, Anthony Okajuani because you can actually use the fight of the night bonus, which is what I think this fight's going to be to buy those tires. Because exactly. I'm sitting here trying to figure this one out. Like this this fight to me is like trying to because I like both you guys outside the cage and outside the rings. Like I like you guys as, as people. I like what you do. You're totally different. I mean, there's no similarities between you at all. 
as far as like personality wise, but I love both you guys and like what you do and how you go about things, how you approach life. And then I love the way both of you guys fight. So for me, I'm on the fence. So you got to convince me to vote your way. Like the, how are you going to convince the other people like me that are on the fence with this one about you and Anthony? Like, this is a really, really, Joe Silva put together a great matchup on this one. This is a, a tough one for the, even for the bookies to pick. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, uh, I definitely think I'm better looking than him. I don't, I don't even know who you're going to pick. Like, um, I mean, I guess we'll have to see when the fight plays out and see what happens and, uh, who's more aggressive and, and who's more of a well-rounded fighter. Well, let's talk about the five inch height difference. You're five eighty, six one, six foot and a half, something like that. Yeah. Um, he fights. He punches real long. He kicks real long. He's, he uses his, his distance very well. You're obviously going to get right in his kicking and punching range before you can even touch him. Um, what kind of problems does that pose in practice? Finding guys that can kind of mimic that style for you. Well, for me, I've really been working on closing the distance uh, in, a, in an open area, something without walls that I can, you know, pin them, pin them up against. So, uh, and then once I get into the cage with him and I have walls that he can't go through, I'll, I'll have an advantage. So, um, I just been really working on closing distance fast, staying inside, um, you know, cause he, he has the advantage outside. That's, that's where his advantage is, but he has a disadvantage. Once I get inside those long arms, yeah. you know, don't do too much when, when you're close. So, uh, me, for, for me, I just have to close the distance. That's, uh, you know, close distance, stay inside, and, and, and throw some hard shots. I, I think he's, if I remember correctly, he's like nine KOs of his 16 victories and zero submissions and all the rest of the decisions. Yeah. You're nine KOs, five decisions and one submission, and you're 15 victories. I, both of you are good strikers, so... It's either one of two things is going to happen. One of you is going to catch the other one, kind of like Orlovsky in, in Bigfoot, mm -hmm. or you're going to negate each other out on the feet. So now you're talking about wrestling and grappling. Be honest. How much better is your wrestling than his? Is, is his a five and yours is a ten? Are you a, you know are you an eight? Like where what do you rank him and what do you rank yourself as far as wrestling? Well, I feel like okay, so if I had a wrestling match with him, um, I would be, beat him 10 out of 10 times in a wrestling match right. with wrestling rules and take, you know, um, but MMA wrestling is completely different. It, I mean, it, similarities, um, I feel like he's got pretty good, uh, you know, of a wall takedown defense game. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's good at getting back to his feet when he's on the wall, but it's a matter of open mat that, uh, that I feel like I have a huge advantage, um, as far as finishing takedown, pulling him down open mat without the cage for him to try to get up. Okay. Now let's talk about jiu-jitsu. He spends a lot of time working on his jiu game because it's his weak area. He's talked about it before with me in his interviews, and I'm interviewing him again on uh, on Saturday, and he'll say the same thing again. He's still working a lot of time on his jits because that's the, the game he hasn't spent the most time on. Uh, mm -hmm. Him on top, is he the most dangerous guy you've ever had on top of you with ground pound in, in his jiu-jitsu game? Or is there somebody that was more dangerous on top of you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, realistically... I've been on my back uh, not too often. My last fight I think twice. was a big, yeah, it was a big display. So I would say the most dangerous person that's been on top of me is uh, um, uh, my last opponent. Um, Masvidal. Yeah, Masvidal. Yeah. So, you know, I haven't spent a whole lot of time on my back. I don't really get taken down too often. So, um, yeah, well, even, well, even when you do slip, the occasional times you get taken down, I, I, this is how I judge a takedown in MMA, and this is this is for everybody at home so you understand. And this 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 is uh, I went and took the Big John McCarthy, as most people know. I took the Big John McCarthy refing and judging course. I passed. I ref and I judge now, and but my judging was the hardest portion for me because refing you just have to kind of keep the rules in your head, but only interfere when there's a problem. Judging you got to like make a decision. So John and I, I still take privates with John uh, because I want to be better than everybody else. It's just because I'm right. not competitive at all. Right. And one of the things that we go off of and we go through is that one of the things we agreed upon is that when you look at a takedown, if you take somebody down but do nothing with it, the guy escapes right away, the takedown doesn't count for anything. The escape doesn't count for anything either, so it's a, it's a zero-sum kind of kind of situation. Right. If you take somebody down and, you, and you're hitting them and you're beating them up and you're banging them, you're going to get some consideration for that takedown and the punching after and, and that kind right. of thing. Do you think when you take – first of all, when you get taken down, you don't stay down. Like you're not just down there, oh, I got taken down, let me, let me concede guard and start playing. You get back up. So even a couple of times you've slipped and fallen down, 
I don't ever count those as takedowns. That's why I said you've only been really taken down a couple times that I can remember because there's the only time you get taken down and somebody started doing some damage to you. Right. The other thing is, do you think when you take Anthony down, which is going to happen at some point because you can get inside, it, it's just the way the nature of the game, that he would be able to get away from you. Of, if you have 10 takedowns, how many times do you think he gets away from you, if at all? Um, it's, uh, it, I mean, it's, it takes a toll trying to hold someone down. You know, I try to be, uh, I guess you could say cost effective. I mean, if I'm getting tired holding him down and I can dance around on my feet and, and, uh, you know, I feel like I could, I can kickbox all day long. It's the wrestling part that's tiring. So, you know, like if, if it's not cost effective and I'm not doing, uh, what I need to do on top, I'm, I'm going to, you know, Stand up, even being on top and being on, you know. Um, so, because okay. it's a it's a three round fight, it, it, you know, it's you gotta gotta be able to go the whole distance. So, like a lot of my fights, I've been on takedowns, and I'm like, man, this is tiring. Like, what am I doing? I need to break off and strike again because it's it's uh, you know, for me, it's a lot a lot it's better. A lot of work. It's a lot of work. Well. This fight's gonna be a great fight, Darren. I I really think, and the the fans that are you know that have access to uh, MMA Oddsbreaker Premium need to pay attention to the lines, and and this this fight could be definitely on this card on October fourth in uh, in uh, Nova Scotia. It's uh it um Halifax Metro Center. Sorry, I was trying to remember off the top of my head that this this fight could be fight of the night because both of you guys are gonna swing, both of you guys are aggressive, and to me it's about who's gonna be able to establish the distance first. Is he gonna keep you on the outside, right. or are you gonna get on the inside? Whoever establishes that space. And the quicker whoever establishes that space establishes it is going to win. Because it's going to be right. set from the first round. And once you establish it, it's going to be kept that way. So this fight's going to be great. I can't wait to see this one come off. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Thanks, but I appreciate it, man. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks. Have me. I'll see you later.